And now we'll go to the third page of this web application. This page demonstrates a bit more of the dynamic or animated interactive content possibilities of the form, like that little video that played when the page started. You can also make video content available in pop-up dialogues, which could, as an example, help show a user how to fill out a form or perform a task. So if I press this button, I get a demonstration in this case of how to fill out this form. This technique is also used to keep the main form surface area clean by showing video content to a user as a separate modal operation. For example, a particular business function might associate multiple videos with the form data, and the user could make a selection and then view the video that they selected. There are a lot of options for setting up the user experience of a forms-based web application. For example, pop-up dialogues can also be used to show HTML, like this, why is my email address required? This page of the application also has a number of the usual inputs, including text inputs, date pickers, and a multi-selection check group. This has a two-column layout, but you can have any layout that you want. And you can also set these to single selection uh, checkbox groups instead, which is just like a radio button group, except with squares. This drop-down at the bottom shows you a little more of the dynamic interactive content capability. If I select lake or pond, I get an additional drop-down to add more information. If I select ocean marine, I actually get two additional drop-downs. One of the most interesting new possibilities for IBM Forms 4.0 comes when you use that pop-up dialog mechanism I showed you a moment ago to bring up interactive HTML content. In this case, I'm going to press a button that brings up a map that allows you to find the location of the nearest firehouse uh, to the property that's being insured. Once you select that, it will actually run a web service that will collect or that will determine the distance uh, of the insured property to that firehouse because that will be one of the parameters in the insurance quote. You can think of it like, sort of like a human web service. Instead of going to the server with an Ajax call, you're going to the user with a dialog. But either way, some processing happens independently of the main form, and then some aspect of the main form receives the results. A last aspect of interactivity that this page demonstrates is the ability to control the interaction flow of the user experience. In this case, I'll hit the fill out a page button, but then I'll go over here and I'll empty the estimated replacement cost and hit enter. So the user is immediately told that they have to enter this information. But if they go and hit the next button anyway, they're told more affirmatively that they need to enter some more information. So the business rules within this page are being enforced and they can't go on to the next page until they add a value. And of course, if they add a patently invalid value, then they're told about that. But once they correct the error by, let's say, putting in a number of any kind, once that number has been entered, it may be reformatted to a proper currency value according to a locale specification, but as a valid input, the user is then allowed to proceed to the next step of interaction within the wizard.